So as uh, you know, in our last class, uh, we went through all of the explanation, uh, deep explanation uh, uh, regarding the testing the different annotation like before test, after test, suit, before to suit, after suit, before method. Uh, after method and uh, you know also the difference between and also we went through the test in Jackson and file with the uh, the default uh, template it comes with and we try to explain and go through those now today we're going to uh, do some very simple code but we'll see how those meaning this annotation works okay the some of the real example we, we are going to see and we'll see that as we have learned uh, what does it mean when you use before a uh, test annotation with your method with any method you know we'll, we'll see that uh, is that really applied to in your XML file in test folder and it will execute at the first uh, of that module right that's what we knew that about the before test annotation if we use so similarly rest of them too so we'll see is that really works or is that really happen in real life when you're going to create some uh, the method and use those annotation okay so let's go uh, and uh, shareful mm -hmm. yeah sorry can you go back to that XML yes yeah, uh, yeah. So this one so when we were going through this last time um, you see the class names like um, day one day two day three mm -hmm. day four yeah um, can we run uh, classes from different uh, projects or does it have to be the same package? Different pro no, 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 you can't run from the different project. So it have to be the same project. So in your different okay. project, you will have a, uh, you know, uh, another uh, test in XML file for that project. Okay. So this, right. this XML, it's all belongs to this project. Like <laughs> our project is test in G, uh, uh, tutorial. So this is all belongs to for this. Okay. 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 Thanks. <clears throat> so let's go. Uh, what I'm going to do, uh, test ng, I will create a, let's see. Uh, okay. The five, I will create a uh, copy. I'll create a, another new test ng XML file so that, uh, you know, you can do with me at the same time from the scratch. So, just copy and place I'm going to place on this if you need more than one so when you convert your your project to test ng remember that we had to convert it and that time it's a test ng XML file automatically created so assume that you need more than one XML file you can create as many as XML file you want in your same project so on, on that time just copy your previous one and paste on your project level I believe let's see if i do it okay let's give it a name over here i would say uh not the listener or say um, testing g class uh, testing g a practice right back whatever name you can give just make sure you give it you keep the the extension one dot xml file okay so i got a another one test ng so let's test ng uh, close this one so practice i'm going to open it and i uh, will you know uh, so listener i'll close this guy so i'll make it you know as default usually it comes and then <coughs> you i think this part is come okay class classes i will remove for now right, test test it okay sorry what is the thread count again i forgot test count a thread count well usually i mean this is a by default it comes with uh, you know it's a code you don't have to worry but on uh, uh just to let you know when uh, you know there is a concept about called parallel testing that you can run your test at the same time in multiple environment or multiple uh, uh browser at the same time that time you know it's uh, you can use that thread count 
like you know uh, you know how many environment or how many uh, browser you can run it's you know use that that per perspective but right now you, you don't you don't have to worry about this this is a you know default code comes with the thread count all those things okay five Let's see the name. Okay. okay, so I assume that this is your uh, XML file. You know, I will we'll up, uh, update this file. Okay, moving forward. So let's go to the, our class. So let's create some class. And then, you know, as per our class, we'll update our, our XML file. So let's, first I would say, let's, let me explain you the first class then i will give you the code uh, in slack and then you will you know update the place the code so that you don't have to you know waste time and just understand that because this is not any uh, you know specifically for any any application uh, code for any application this is just a simple method you know and just some printing statement the reason why we're using because you know we want to see the output and output is showing as per our definition we have learned for all the annotation is how it works so I create a class it's called day one <clears throat> and here is a, a few methods I created like a demo demo two and then run before test and though and every method is comes with a, some annotation the first demo and demo two I use a test annotation so test when you use a test annotation with any method so it means this annotation will apply right after this annotation whatever the immediate uh, the method you have so this test annotation it will apply to demo method and the test annotation it means we know that this is this is means this the the method you have immediate with this this is a complete pure test method okay this method you know this this method will have the code for related to your test cases test cases means like you know say here is a drop down a static drop down you have to uh, you have to select some static uh, uh, record you know result from your static drop down so you select that you go to that driver don't find the element you know you place the locator and then you 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 uh, click up there and then from there you select one of them you know use the uh, selects method right oh sorry actions method right so similarly whatever the code is related that's the code will be go over there because this is a pure test cases okay similarly demo 2 it's another test cases and since we place the test annotation so this is another pure test cases and here it will be your code for now you know i just put some printing statement but here i create another method it's called i give a name by the name so that you can understand i give a name run before test and i put before test annotation so it means this method you see this i said i will execute it will print i will execute first before any test run in the test folder you know i i pr i'm printing some of the statement i mean uh, you know as per the document we know this what the before test annot annotation does that's exactly it does right so this method will be executed in your test folder test folder it means in your xml file in your test folder it means this is the test folder whatever the name you gave over here okay in this place if this 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 class if this day one class is belongs to this uh, you know test folder so whatever the class what uh, this method uh, belongs to any class so this class will be wherever the module in your xml file in that xml file you know uh, in uh, in this module whatever the number of classes you have and the number of all the methods you have among all the methods this method before test method before test this before test annotation uh, method will be run at the very beginning at the very first okay so if we run if we place all this you know uh, this this class day one class in xml file this method supposed to run at the beginning so at the first we supposed to see if is a run this method so this output supposed to show at the first right this one I will execute first this is supposed to show in our uh, statement in our console first and after that it's supposed to show demo and demo 2 right because this is because of this annotation 
and because you know if you use this annotation your method belongs to this annotation will be you know run uh, you know uh, in your module level in your test module level okay so let's do this so what I'll do let me give you the code first so I would say create a class create a class and give a name pub uh, day one okay create a class similarly if you in your uh, you know in your test project so uh, in your test uh, package so new create a class and then you give a name exactly the same way otherwise it's not gonna code not going to match so I would say day one similarly and you know as you know we don't need any more main method since we're using testing XML right so create a day one class and then you know finish it so you will have a day one class and inside the class I will give you the code place the code up there is that clear everyone yeah so let me know when you are finished uh, creating the class and between the class opening bracket between the opening and closing bracket you are going to place the code inside there's a, another method I put over here but I put in a comment I will explain you later on Uh, can you run two XML files at the same time, like as you said parallelly? Uh, you can run, yes. You can run. Okay. You can you can run two XML files at the same time, but that's okay. a different way. And, and can you use the same classes uh, in both of them? I'm sorry. Can can you what? Can, can we use the same classes in, in both uh, XML files? Same classes in both XML files. Yeah, say if one of the class is common in both of the XML files. Um, I uh, I don't think so. You can do this. I mean, you can do, but you know, that time uh, you have to give a priority, like which one is going to run first, which one is going to run uh, later on. I see. Okay. Okay. Let's go through our the very standard one, and then we'll talk about more uh, you know complex uh, you know uh, relationship. Okay. So let's uh, let's go. Uh, uh, did you create the class day one? Yeah. Okay. Inside between opening and closing bracket, let me give you the code. Keep this this method. You will see there's a fail method I created. Public void fail method is a test. Also, this is a test, but we'll use later on. Okay. Just leave it as it is for now. We'll, we'll use these three methods okay so inside a day uh, day one so I'm going to give you the code so I'm not adding the bracket so you know between your opening and closing bracket please place the code up there so here in slack you know I give you the code <clears throat> oh, I, yesterday actually I tried to practice but already I created a uh, practice class and I uh, created this method okay so yeah. did, did you create just a one class or you created more than uh, a lot of more uh, other classes too no just only one class okay let's and right now class uh, created day one and all together two class yeah, okay, let's create a leave it at the practice class as it is you have you know You can play around later on just create a, another a brand new day one So we are all in the same page so that I don't have to tell you separately that so you you have to do this one You have to update us there. Okay So after you place the code in your class, you have to remember that it's at the beginning you will have uh, some you know error uh, with the, all the annotation. So you have to add the package. You don't have to add the library, I believe. So uh, uh, because we already did that the first time. First time after you add the library, all you have to now just you know hover your mouse and add all of the related package. 
like you know uh, you know the package is right uh, test ng package annotation test ng annotation package are related with your you know before test and as well as related with the test uh, annotation you'll see some of the annotation you did so test annotation you have to import as well as before annotation you have to import and definitely this is a part of your so this class is belongs to a test package so you know it will be already there so it's the uh, import test uh, test ng annotation that one yes yes just make sure you know if you do it you don't have to write it right you know it so you uh, yeah just to import it import it yes So after you're done, so you have right now three method, two is test method, one is before test, right? Let's place, so now, see this now, up until now, we have learned that if you have a class, if you want to run this class, you, you have to run in this class, right click and run in Java. But since we were moved to now test ng, and test ng has the central command or central control through the your XML file. So if we want to run this class, you know, we can run through the XML file. You will see the how the XML file will control your classes and also the priority, all those things. Let's go to the your XML file, open your XML file. <coughs> open your XML file and then let's give over here your XML file pretty much like this suit. There's no, you know, suit name. So I will put, let's put a suit name here give a name equals to and it should be all string so it should be double quotation you know and update over here say say assume that this is a uh, bank all right uh, suit name say example mm, uh, or loan department loan loan department so assume that this is your xml file so all it belongs to loan department in the loan department we will have some module separate separate test module one could be like personal loan one another could be home loan another could be car loan right so all those things so the first one assume that this is your personal loan okay so inside a test give a name again keep the code as it is thread count and then give a name equals to put the personal loan give a name is a personal loan okay and then definitely you have a closing test and you have a classes classes right and then you're closing soon so this is your format so now if you are created then uh, give a name this is your module module name or test module name and this is your suit name that's all you do now if i want to put this day one say assume that this day one is belongs to this personal loan module just assume that okay if it belongs to this module or this suit I mean, so this uh, yeah, test, uh, you know, uh, folder, if it belongs to, so how I'm going to put this one to make sure this is under this test folder. All you have to do, sorry, all you have to do between the classes, you see the classes and classes between opening and closing classes, you put all the classes name, you know, which is belong to this, this module or this test folder. So between these classes tags right so all, how are you gonna write you are going to write this way class then class name class name equals to and then it's a string double forward slash between the uh, uh, sorry double quotation between the double quotation you'll put your your package name what's your package name it's over here test right your package name so package name test dot the class name you wants to put under this module which is the day one so exactly the same way you are make sure you are going to write if your package name is lower play uh, you know it started with the t with the lower t exactly the same way if it's a mix up with upper and lower the name you use previously is not going to work so that because java is a case sensitive language so test dot so your package name dot class name so and then after that you have to make sure that a lot of times we forget that part that so we forget to add the closing tag so this is your class class name package equals to package name dot your class name and then closing there's a closing tag of your class so you don't have to write separately class closing tag this will uh, you know this means is you are saying it's a closing of your class tag 
Okay? Everybody good? Yeah. If you're good, save it. Control S, your XML file. And then let's run it. Let's see that if its output shows as we were expecting from our day one class. So right click on your XML file and then run as test in G suit. Run it. Let's see. Is everyone uh, ran uh, and you got output? Yes. Okay. Now let's explain uh, our console output. Here is a output. Output is you know it's it's supposed to print something you know because all my classes have all of the method have the printing statement nothing else. So as far in our class you know we have we said this is the two test method and one is before test annotation method. So since I said before test annotation method, so this method supposed to run first in your XML file, wherever in your XML file this class is belongs to in your that uh, test module. In this test mo module, you know, somewhere this uh, here is the, your class. And in this class, whatever the method, number of method you have, uh, with, among all the method, this supposed to run at the first, this one. You know before test uh, it's a run before test method run before test method and it's supposed to print this i will execute first before any test run in the test folder so this is supposed to print at the first you can see if you noticed our output in your console this is you know printing first it's printed first it means this method got executed first and after that it's went to the demo uh, which is the hello world this is the hello world and then next one is good morning in the other test method is that clear and it shows you know we have a total test run two because we have this two is the you know pure test method this is not the test this method is not the test method this is a method but this is a before test method so that's why it's a, you can see it says your test uh, suit which is the loan department and total test run two failure zero and escape zero okay is that a clear is that a make sense as we have learned the definition and and the real output yes right awesome so let's go to day two in day two <clears throat> um in day two we have uh another test method i will create let's create another class a given name day two then i will explain it Everybody good? So in your day two class, inside the class, in a between the opening and closing bracket, I will give you the code. But just to let you know, the, the, you can see the first method is called print date method. I create a method given in print date method. So it's a test method, and here it's supposed to print your current date. You know there is a date class available, and then I so I call the date class, create an object of the date class, and then use one of the method that's to you know uh, that's help you to print your current date but it may give you an error you have to import some of the you have to import some of the uh, what's called uh, package as well as uh, some of the library some library could be uh, old you know I have seen in my one of the uh, class that's you know uh, students they were getting some issues uh, like they are not finding the method it may get some uh, you'll see this not finding the appropriate uh, library or if it's that then we'll just put some printing statement but let's see I will give you I will give you the code first and also I will give you the uh, you know import imported library so that you can place up there to uh, directly you you copy and paste the imported library it may then will find it you know this is not the something we're learning how you are going to you know print or uh, create your current date you know this is just something 
you know so we can use any simple method just uh, you know we want to see how it works because we are we have a one test method here as well as what we have another test method which is after test so we have seen our previous example previous class day one we have seen before test this is another example it's called after test so after we run it we'll see this it will it's supposed to run at the very end after all the methods gets executed that's our intention not something that just you know uh, to learn how the date method how the date uh, classes uh, uh, works right so anyways i'm giving you code let's see this if you, do, you get any error or not so between the opening and closing bracket you know place this code for under the date two date two class <coughs> and related um, so you have to import the uh, again same after test annotation and test annotation but for the day for the date you know you have to import use if you if you find you will get an error you have to import the package if you find the package it shows exactly as it is it's fine if you don't find it you can just copy and you know place at the top right at the top those package I'm giving you the package too related package uh, for the date format okay so you can just copy and and paste it uh, you know either after or before you can put up uh, before i think so after the test package place it make it some space make a line and, and place up there and then save it and let's see this if it, if it can synchronize it can find it it can understand that okay this is the related package for this date class and also uh, there is another class also called simple date format but it's still if you see error then we will just put some printing statement so let me know when you are done So, as I said, so let's assume that day two also part of our test ng XML file and in, inside the same module, okay? Same module, like name is personal loan. So, if I want to add this, the same thing I will do. I'll say class, class name, then equals to, what's the name? So, it would be the package name, test, which is the test, dot, day two right there too and after that i will close the class uh, uh tag right so now day two is a part of also our personal loan module right save it so after you save it let's run it so now you will see if you uh, you know uh, go through our console you will see first it's a day one it ran the day one so in a day one we had one is before test module or before test method so which is the I will execute the first so it ran first in your XML file in your module level right among all the methods you have between these two classes that one you see the first it's ran the before test module method doesn't matter how many classes you have in this module how many methods you have in this module between all these both classes all the methods among all the methods before test always run first because that's apply in your you know in, in your XML file in your test module level in your module whatever the number of classes whatever the number of your methods between all of them if you have a you know before test module any method that will be run first as it is you know it is it's ran first and it's printing the first right that's from the day one we've seen and then day one we have you know hello world that actual test method good morning test method and it's the day two we have in our day two we had a test mo uh, uh, method which is a it will supposed to print your you know current date this is printing current date and then it's supposed to print uh, also there's another format and this is another format so three different format this method supposed to print the current date and a time so it did so it execute 
and at the end you know after that yeah you know i have there's another method called run after all tests i give a name so that it you know it makes sense because this is the what the method will do because of this annotation it's called after test annotation so after test annotations will apply to any method and that method will run at the very end in your xml module level in your xml test module level you know it will run at the very end you know among all the methods between number of classes you have so between day one and day two whatever the number of methods you have after all the method gets executed this supposed to execute very end which is the i will execute last in a test folder personal loan that's what it's ran at the end and it's giving you this uh, you know uh, 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 skin result in your console so as far we have learned the definition it's doing the job is it clear and you can see this it's ran total three tests which is that day one is two demo and demo two and this in day two there is a only one test method so that's why it's test three there's no failure there's no skips make sense everyone yes okay let's go day four we'll put in you know in this uh, in this xml file we'll put day four also not day three we'll create another module or an another test module and then we'll put the day three and day five on that module so we'll create more than one module and we'll put different different class in different different module so let's put over here day <coughs> four day four let's see what do we have so create another class is given name day four we'll create the day three later on <coughs> so day four is a little bit interesting So you got a day four, right? Done? Yeah. Okay, in a day four, let's explain what do we have. In day four, we have few test method. Uh, all of them are test. So those are all pure test method. You can see one method is uh, it's called a web, lo web login home loan. Another one is mobile login home loan. Another one is login API home loan. Okay, so it's a three different login, uh, say assume that this is a three different login method for web uh, application, another one is mobile application, another one is API application, okay? And then it has some code, so I just put uh, some uh, 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 printing statement, you know, just for now. So like web login uh, for the web login home and mobile login home and then API login home. But what I did over here, as I said, uh, probably the first class, uh, that uh, when you have a test annotation with a method this is means it's a pure test uh, method and when you run it how it gets executed as far as the priority in order well you know what would be the order format it has in test ng xml i mean test ng uh, you know uh, it has its own format like it will execute as per the alphabetical order if you don't put any priority so it will execute if you notice that day one we had a two so we had a demo and demo two since demo you know it's a both the same name so it gets executed alphabetical order so it's ra it ran first and uh, demo two ran uh, next so as i was saying right so it's ran uh, the your method it's ran uh, uh, alphabetical order by default but if you want you can put your own priority so in day four that's what we're learning here so assume that I have all the three methods over here all of the test method and in the test method you know it's so the priority I want to say you know the first one say web so if we don't put the priority over here in terms of our alphabetical order uh, mobile this supposed to run first right because this, since this m is that uh, if you consider the alphabetical order m is before l oh sorry l l supposed to run first right so
so l is before m so this the, the if we if you consider the alphabetical order order so this is supposed to run first and then mobile supposed to and then web because it's w is the very end right but but you are saying okay i want to run my web login this w1 at the very first then the mobile one and then the the login one so last you wants to run first and the first you wants to la run last so you can put your own priority so in that sense how are we going to do this with your test annotation you can put your priority in this format in between the bracket you can say priority and it started it's started by uh, following the indexing uh, you know numbers so it started with the zero zero it means you know this is your first one you want to run this one first and then priority one priority two as far as you wish okay so we'll see we'll put this you know uh, class in our xml file and we'll see when it's ran the method from this day four class is that followed our priority or not okay that's our job did i give you the code everyone Uh, let me so between okay this is a day four uh, uh, okay So I give you the code for day four and place the code, okay? Between your opening and closing bracket. Okay, let's, uh, let's put this day four, now day four in our uh, in an XML file. So it's a similarly same thing we'll do. We'll put over here in Day 4, but we'll we'll do one more thing We'll remove we'll exclude remember that we said if we want to exclude in day 4 Let's put everything then we'll exclude one of them. Okay. It's gonna be give you more clear uh, You know the visualization. So let's put the day 4 here class class name equals to and then we'll say test dot package name dot your class name day four okay and then don't forget to close it right so run save it control s so you save this and after that just run it Everybody ran in? So if you run it, if you see my screen, the console output, you know, first, this is the, you know, this as it is, it's ran. I will execute first, you know, uh, from the day one, among all these methods, all the classes, the before test module is still is running first, at the very first, then two map thought hello world and good morning from the day one and then it's from the day two it's printed you know test it's printed a different format of dates and time and then two more map third you know uh, uh, for web login oh this is from the sorry this is from the day four in day four i said i did a prioritize i said web login home loan this will run first so it's supposed to print web login home. You can see this web login home, it's printing first. If you, I mean, for your exercise, for your security, if you want, uh, you know, later on at your home, you may remove those priority and run it and you will see this one, that this API, this method will run at the first. So API login home will print first, but here as per it's uh, printing, doing, executing the method as per our priority. The second priority I said, you know, print mobile login home. So mobile, you can say mobile login home. And third one, API login home, API login home. 
and at the very end it ran the method from our day two because in our day two we had a after test method so after test method always run at the very end in your test in gxml file in your test module uh the module level you know whatever the uh, classes and methods you have among all the methods after x gets executed as i said this method supposed to after test method supposed to run at the very end you can see at the very end it's execute got executed and it's printing the statement i will execute at the last in the la in test mo you know folder personal loan okay it's it's running so is that working as per our definition and as far we we put the priority all those things right that's it this is doing exactly as we you know you know define as we use different annotation you know that's our so you see this the control how you get the control that's why it's called test ng it's the it's the framework that's give you the control on your you know framework like the way you want to run you know the, the way you want to set up your priority okay all those things okay is that make sense is that clear this idea everyone yeah okay let's learn uh, now next learn how to exclude or include any method from your in a specific you know classes for so example if you go to our day four in our day four uh the which one we we ran uh say example login api home so this one we ran so login api home it's uh it's run at the very end or let's move on the first one so what was the first priority on our first part on web login home this is the method web login web login home loan this is the method and here it's printed web login home right it's printed web login home we, we have seen over here so assume that you now uh requirement to run all the methods yeah. <laughs> oh, one second mm -hmm. can i see the day two again day two class yeah mm -hmm. so why my last one like after test this second bracket shows you know your the so, after test mm -hmm. with the last second bracket it shows error here you're talking with here yeah it shows error so yeah, last, yeah maybe you have okay some, i need to put maybe another another one, one you're you're missing this yeah. last one maybe well this is the you know the final closing bracket uh, yeah right yes, thank you yeah save it yeah go to where okay go back to our day four so i assume that from our day four you know the the method we have the first method the priority zero one this is the first one we have seen it's execute first so it's printing it printed web login home so it's printed web login home okay this part assume that that's your requirement run all the method except this one sometimes it can happen say assume that in your real life you know you may you know uh come you may uh, uh come across that okay this the related code for this method somehow somehow this is a known issue okay this is a known issue for the for this so you want to ignore for now you want to run your execution your uh, your script but ignore you can you know you can say okay just run all the method except this method so and wait until you know we fix the code and then later on you can run it so if you want to exclude whatever the reason how we can exclude there's a two way you can put comments over here right you can put uh, this method is comment all uh, you know well, i mean from all the lines that's like a day one if you see in day one for our f there is a method is called fail method so i put comment so it didn't uh, you know it didn't execute it was not part of the execution so this is i mean it's it, it is it will it is working but it's it's something is not very professional you know it's much more easier option that over here and if if it's happen like one method it's very easy but if you have a tons of methods say out of uh, 100 you have to exclude 20 methods so in 20 method you have to comment that's a lot of works other than you know we can do very simple simple we have an option in our you know uh, exclude option in our test in jxml file so if we want to exclude this method so copy the method name just copy the method name 
okay go back to your your XML file and what's the, what what this method belongs to under the day four in day four since we want to exclude so we want to add we have to make sure that under this day four we'll put uh, the method name which wants to exclude or include that time it means this line is not finished in that sense we are not finished it so remove this closing bracket and then after this so you may put a sub line you know it's better to put some little bit of space so that it, this line can understand you can easily understand this line is a part of this class okay so put it here and here we'll say same we'll put methods we'll uh, uh, write it tab name uh, uh, tag name is methods similarly like a uh, classes we'll say methods so you can you know exclude or include more than one method so that's why it's methods methods opening bracket and then put a closing bracket methods you can see right there way if you put just a hit enter it will automatically write and just make sure there is an extra bracket so remove it so between the methods tag you know you can write all the methods name so how we can say you will say say what do you want to do you want to exclude so you will type e exclude exclude okay you will say exclude and then name what's the uh, method name between the double quotation you will put that just method name just a method name whatever the method okay so you will copy the method name from here so i copy the method name just name here and then come back here and after you copied it so the, you have to close this line because this is all that's all you wanna you know uh, exclude so put that closing bracket this one okay this one so you you excluded this method he wants to actually here you don't put any package name because this is not just part of the package this is part of your class that's why you put your exclude or include right after your class so you don't have to put anything else you just put that your you know the method name up there and you close it okay and after that still there is an error the reason why you have you open this classes your uh, class tag but you didn't close anywhere right inside this uh, this class tag you have this this line you have this code you have this code right so you haven't closed this class tag so at the end you have to close your class tag too so you see your class so now it's error gone make sure you save it control s after you save it and then you run it everybody we got it yeah i need to uh, need some time to yeah yeah no problem take your time sorry where is the class coming from the class tag the class tag is from here so since you have to exclude your method so we remove this closing tag from your class over here for day four after the day four like unlike oh you know, okay, okay got it, got it, and got it. that's why we have to close it so it means all the codes between this class opening and closing tag it belongs to this this uh class got it thank you okay. yeah, okay let's see where okay methods methods okay then class okay the reason why because you see your if you go line number nine nine yeah. nine you said class name your package name dot oh, I close it, that yeah way? you already close up there so it's it's oh. a double close now you see it's gone save it please yeah thank you okay share. let's uh share the screen okay we're good so if we are good let's run it run it this okay let's go through the output okay the first as it is you know your the, my console is different your console is what do you mean different uh it comes actually is that uh, a show something like this yeah 
Okay, cl click on the console, there is a tab. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Good? Yeah. So, if you, if you see the output, where, you know, as it is, the before test method ran at the very first from the day one, and then the method from two other test method from the day two and day, uh, sorry, day one, and also that this is the method related all of the date from the day two, and this, there is it from the day four, now it's printing only two method, mobile login home, API login home. So if you go day four, there is a mobile login home, mobile login home, this one and API login home, and this one for, for web login home, this one, you know didn't print anything and this is the one the method web login home we exclude in our test in xml right we exclude that's why it got exclude from our you know from our uh, execution so it didn't print see this how the exclude works that's the way it's excluded and as it is uh, you know from the day two class the uh, uh, after uh, after test method gets run at the very end from the day two does it make sense? Clear everything? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Sounds good. So now the next would be we're going to uh, create another. So assume that you have this is your one module, like personal loan. Now it's let's say another one is a uh, car loan or home loan. Okay. You know, home loan or car loan, we have, that's separate module. That's another separate folder. And that folder, you will have some new classes some some lots of new classes lots of some test cases so we'll create a separate module so we can put multiple test module in one test in an xml file how can we do this let's do it so let's create uh same you can just copy this line you know or you can just copy the whole thing copy the whole thing your first module and put it again put a space then put there and here you just update your stuffs. How you are going to update? You are saying here. So first here, just put the change the name. Instead of personal loan, you will say home loan. Home loan. Okay. And here between the classes, so let's remove the classes. We'll update the over here. All the new classes, right? Let's remove the method also. So let's remove this guy. Okay, so between the classes, we'll put a new class for this new test module, right? And then your test close, test close, and suit should be fine. Why suit is giving error? Let me put a space. Okay, so uh, I'm getting error. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's a always it's it's a, you know when you create a closing one, you will say it's an extra. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, it's created an extra, you know, uh, another bracket. So you have to find this one, and then uh, you have to make sure it's, uh, you put all the closing bra uh, you know the uh, tag for classes, so for classes. So and then for the class other class you have to put make sure you put all the, all of them and also every test module test will have a test uh, you know test uh, closing tag too so when you create another one you know so similarly i think it's better you can write it down other than copying paste when you copy paste it's automatically added some of the extra you know the end and close or, or tag so if you just you know copy this line let's copy this line first and then you know uh, put the this test and then write your own you know just classes classes so write this one it's gonna be easier other than just copy and paste did you uh and rest of the did you able to follow it
if you have got a lot of so make sure that your first module it's good and then just remove the stuffs and then just just copy from the you know the, the this line so let's for for a home loan let's see that is you know we're putting some create some classes and we'll put that class up there so let's create another class it's called day three let's put the day three up there so remember that we missed the day three so let's put the day three so create a class give a name day three okay in day three Okay, create a class given name day three. <clears throat> so everyone have a day three class, right? okay in day three uh we're going to put something before suit after suit okay <coughs> okay let's put that class okay. as before suit so we're going to use the before sword and okay before method before class okay up until now yes and then we're going to learn something new so place this code in day three So in a day three, you have uh, one, two, two test method, mobile login car, login API car loan, just printing a statement. And then now we're going to see how the before suit, after suit. So we have a two more method. It's called run before suit, run after suit. And it's with a before suit annotation, after suit annotation. And also again, we have, you know, before method, and then we have a before class annotation okay so pretty much here is a you know the big conf i mean a lot of uh stuffs the confusing stuffs we put i put over here so we'll see that how those are stuffs is uh executing as per the definition of web learn so if you're done then we'll update our xml file So let's go to our XML file and here we're going to write uh, how we're going to write it the same way, right? We'll put the class, class name, right? Equals to, so what's our package name? It's test dot uh, your uh, class name day three, right? I'll put the day three there let's uh, put the day three and then let's exclude one of them so if i want to exclude from there between classes classes if i want to exclude there so what i have to do i have to say methods right if i want to exclude same as method you can see just you know you put you know break tag uh, like a bracket it's automatically comes methods it's no i mean it's you know it's very intelligent and it can understand that's you know what is the format and what do you want to put so between the methods we'll put a method name 
like exclude c l u d exclude name all right exclude name equals to so let's in between that double for slash let's go to day three um i want to exclude assume that which one uh say mobile login or oh, login api say say api api one i want to exclude so go there put the method name and then make sure you close it and then bracket so your methods methods close exclude uh, opening close done your class class is done classes class is close and this is pretty much good okay save it and then let me know when you're done then we'll run it so after this run test in g suit okay it shows some error just in the exception okay in your case there will be no error okay in my case there all uh, i know it's a word is error don't worry about this so because i have a lot of other codes uh, in your case you know let's talk about this uh, the output in the console right you got all these outputs uh, something like me but you it, it will not exactly the same output because i have in day three i have lots of other codes like that i didn't give you i didn't give this test method i didn't give you some of the other stuffs here there's a lots of other uh, annotation we, we, we haven't learned that part that's why i didn't give you that code okay we'll learn it in your case you will see um in your case we said we're in from day three if you you know i don't want to not going to you know uh, explain from the very top or oh, if you see okay let's talk about it from the very top so i said if you in your output you'll see in day three you know in a uh, in a day three i have a one in uh, day three i have one of the method i exclude this part uh, sorry this part but i have a method before this method ru runs this method runs we have a there is a method is called before suit right guys before suit so before suit if you have a method with before suit annotation that's applied to your xml file in your suit level where is your suit level here so it means this is the the top it's a head of your suit so if you have a, any method any method with before sort annotation doesn't matter in a what class doesn't matter in a what folder even though this day three have that method under this new folder new test folder but since the method have the before suit annotation it will be applied in suit level not in test level it will be applied in suit level if it's a test level it's limitation the execution of limitation between the test opening test and closing test you know your test for a module level but if it's a apply to your suit level so it means you know it's it's applied to all the modules among the all the modules all the classes all the methods okay now it depends is there a before suit or after suit if it's a before suit it will be run in your xml level at the very first doesn't matter where that method under what class under what module is that clear so that's why if you have a day three one of the method is called you know uh, run before suit i give a name with exactly that's the, 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 the you know same meaning this method have a before suit annotation and it says i am number one in suit level so this supposed to print this this method supposed to run at the very first among uh, because it's applied over here among all the methods uh, of modules all the classes all the methods you have in this xml file so that's why in your output you will see this method from the day three this method gets execute and ran at the very first and there is a print statement that's why now it's am um, number one this is the same print statement is that clear guys so how the before suit works and that's what we learned right in our definition in our other class right so and next is next is uh 
your you know as it is your it goes to your now it goes to your this math i mean your uh, first module the module the personal loan over here now it's as it is it goes by day one day two and day four among all those classes all the methods you have in between this all that you have a before before test there was a before test in day one or day two i forgot that uh before test in day one in day one there's a before test method so this is supposed to run in your in your we have we have already seen in your this module because the day one in this module and in this module you have a before test before test it means it apply in your xml level in test module in a module level and among these classes you have day in a day one you have this before before test method so this is supposed to run first between all the methods you have in this module so this is the one it's ex, you know uh, output mm -hmm. i will execute is that i will execute and then from the same module uh similar from the same test module you have method demo demo 2 which is the hello world good morning hello world good morning and the other method other classes like day two from the same module it goes now module by module first module then second module all that you know dates different dates and also the methods we have two methods we said from the day two and uh, there is a one exclude right from one uh from the day two and then uh after uh, 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 there is a after test right after test would be run at the very end of that module when all the methods is got execute so this is the one the last after tests because it's applied to your module level test module level so this is the one it's you know uh, execute at the end of your at the end of your this module so this module is done and then it comes to this module uh, the home loan module but the home loan module in day three since day three this before so this is exceptional because before so always you know it goes to the suit level so it's already done at the very first this one right but it will see in in when it goes to the uh, you know uh, uh, this this module home loan module in over here what do you have here you have a uh, couple of test fold uh, test case uh, test case method mobile car and logging car so mobile car should you know print mobile car it's printing is this one mobile car so this is the mobile car i think in our code you know in our code i i ex exclude this api right api api login api which one i exclude api one so api one got exclude so api login card is missing you will see in your output there's no api login home the api login home is miss sorry api login car is missing right this one this one is missing so there is no api login car you will see there is no api login car here okay and then you will see in this module you know here we have what else we have so before suit already done that this one after suit it will run at the very end so it will not run here at the very end of your suit after all the methods gets executed between these two test module between these two test module it will run at the very end like before suit run at the very first and after suit since it's applied to the suit level in closing suit in after suit is apply over here so this since it's out uh, in a closing suit at the very end of your xml so it that method this method after suit will run at the very end so you will not find over here you will see at the very end is that you know this say i am the last one it will you will see at the very end somewhere okay let's we'll figure out well, let's go to the next one before method so before method it means it's applies specifically your be, uh, before test module right uh before uh oh, sorry what is that it's a before method so what was the before method before method apply to your class level not the before test we have seen before test this is the first time we are looking that before method so before method remember the before method apply in your specific this class level it means in your class whatever the method you have in it i mean test method i'm talking about whatever the test method you, you have over here before any test method run this will supposed to run 
that's why it's called the method before method any test method you have in this class you know it will supposed to run it will supposed to run so this will run but here one more thing here you have another method it's called before class it's called before and uh, oh, one more thing is before method also we have learned in our definition class that it runs when you have a, any method with the before method it runs multiple times it will run before any test method you have so it will run you have a say before method test method this one it will run once and if you have a, another one it will run again so before method runs multiple times be, depends on how many test method you have in this class remember that is that clear okay just give me a second i see there is a fire alarming okay i'll be i'll be right back sorry guys okay so so remember that so as we said it's a before before um well, before method it runs multiple times depends on in your class level depends on how many methods you have so it will run before every method see it gets executed if your every test method gets executed okay so you will see um what's the before method so before method is says uh, before method says delete cache or cookies for different logging test so this will run this will run multiple times so uh your test method what's your test method in your test method yeah the first test one you have um mobile mobile right yes mobile car okay you have a mobile mobile login right so mobile login before mobile login car you will see there is a another uh, this method this will print first delete cache or cookies before different login so let's see that it delete cache you will see the mobile login card before that it's over here delete cache or cookies for different login test okay but and also again you will see multiple times delete login cache or cookies same and before there is a, another another methods it's over here in but in, in in your case you will not find because you know uh, i didn't give you this method this method is about the different you know uh, uh, parameterization so we haven't uh, talked about the parameterization you don't know so I will will cover the parameterization then I will give you the code and we will understand that time so bottom line before methods run multiple times based on you know uh, how many methods you have in your class and before every methods uh, test methods runs this method will execute first but here we have before we I already uh, this one is already done before suit Oh, sorry after not after suit after suit will be later on before class here another method it comes with the before class so before class again it's apply in your class level it apply in your class level at the very first this method will run at the very first even before method even before method where is the before method so before method will run before any test method it gets run but if you have in the same class if you have another method with the before class so then before class will run first and then before method will run you know multiple times depends on how many method you have are you guys do you guys understand that so if you see execute once and and this will execute just once once before any specific class or day class three so this will execute at the very first between this class in from this class if any methods run not in class not in xml level in this class this will run first so you will see even delete cookies this one you know the delete cookies the delete cache or cookies this is the output of our before method you know and then this is the one of the you know uh, test method uh, output but even before method before this you will see the before class output it's ex printing first you will see this one is first execute once before so this is the first because this is says with the before class you know annotation so this will run first in this class first even before method then your before method will run the before method then one of the test uh, method will run and then again your before method will run if you have multiple uh, you know test method 
So I have a multiple test method over here. So this is the multiple and other test method you don't have. So you probably will not see the multiple times. But if you have a multiple test method, your before method will get executed before it runs any other test method. Guys, is that a clear make sense? And you will see at the very end, all of your output at the very end, you will see the result, you know, your your after suit output i'm the last one you will see the i'm the last one at the very end you will see uh, probably is not showing up my one over here because i have some i got some error and then because of other codes related but in your case you will see or your screen you will see at the very end i'm the last one this one this after suits method it gets executed at the very end among in your xml level among all the modules between the two modules between the all the uh, uh, all the classes among all the methods you have guys is that a match as i explained with you in your output yes this match right so that's the difference you know so you the more you are do the practice you will understand you know i uh, the reason why again in my case you know i have some exception code over here that the topics we didn't you know explain you we, ha we haven't got that far so that's why i didn't give you and it has some issues so you know i have to fix it later on but in your case it should be clear now to understand the difference the execution level of difference with the different annotation like uh, uh, before test before after test uh, before class after class before suit after after suit you know all those things before method after method all those things right so we can say that we're pretty much clear about using all the different different annotation including including the priority how we can set up the priority with your test method right are we good up, up to that yeah i just have a question mm -hmm. so before um class actually runs after uh before test right uh before yes before before test yes before we go before before class is on the class level and before test is on the test level in your xml file yes okay and before test uh, runs after before suite before yes suite. after before suite yes before okay. suite is the very top because you know in your xml that's your hierarchy suite is the very top and then is test so anything before suite any method related with before suit it will run no matter what you know where that uh, method is uh, uh, belongs to no matter what uh, under the what uh, module under the what cla uh, classes you know it will run first and then if it's a before uh, before test it will check where this before test belongs to if it's a before test that method belongs to this you know first module when this module will cover this will run first among so it's limitation limited to the module level but it will run first when the you know when one uh when the execution will start for this module if you have a method before module uh, sorry before test and and that belongs to this module you know in this module when the execution will start that before test method will be run at the first and then if you have a before classes it will be run when that classes will get executed that method will be run the before class method will be run at the first when you know for a specific that class when it will get executed is that a make sense right Got it. yeah it makes sense but now uh, like uh, i understand like what runs first and what runs next mm -hmm. but the thing is uh, i'm still not so clear about you know the practical use of this well and now you know so when you are going to you understand that say in your in in your test cases you know the the priority since it's automation so you have to uh you have to uh, maintain your order so which one will get first when you do manual test right you log in first and then you go to the home t home page and you do some testing from there and then you go another page sometimes you go there and then you come back again your home page right back and forth so you know similarly when you do manually i um, mean automation you know you'll have a lots of test cases say so specific one module you have to go back and forth so you have to do the maintain your order otherwise you know your your you know your result is not going to be expected it's not going to be you know follow the you maintain your your framework 
like you if your test gets executed uh, which one is supposed to be for it gets executed uh, first it will not able to maintain the framework and will not able to give you the output as you are looking for so to, to so maintaining order that's one of the very important thing so to do this we have to understand you know all those uh, you know annotation we can using the annotation we can maintain your order which one will you want to run first which one you wants to run later on which one even at the very beginning say example before sud in before sud you may create a method with a before sud where you can put your your url okay so where you know in a before suit example you know what would be the use case you know the use case could be like you know uh, example you know your url your application url web application url uh, some username password maybe you can you definitely those things you have to do the first like when you do even manually like you go to the browser you go to the website then you log in the username password then you go to get inside and sometimes you have to you know you in for other module you may once uh, you need to log out and you go again so you don't want to write the same code again again so you just want to write this one once all of the common code and maybe you wants to and those things is the first or prerequisite to to start your testing so maybe those related code you can put in before before suit if some of one of the module you need to log out and log in back before you start any other method any other test cases that time again same code you could you probably could in before method or before test module so okay for this specific module you know you have to log out and then again you have to log in okay do this one you put a create a method and put a before before test module and for it will apply only specifically for this module level so before you start any test cases make sure whatever the uh, position you were left on your last cl test class exercise your coding log out from the application and log in back and go to the, start with that you know uh, uh, for that specific class start with the test one test two whatever the test right so it depends on your situation like how you want to design how you do in manually exactly you will get the similar type of freedom using all those annotation you know when you do the automation because just to remember in the automation means everything will be run by one single uh, you know uh, click and from there you will be there will be no touch everything you would do manually everything will be automated log out log in back all those things and run the same code again and again and running the same code again and again at the beginning which is like prerequisite or at the very end which is like like a tear down or close all of the window so you know using all those annotation give you the flexibility you know uh, on your framework to design and develop very dynamic framework okay so if you understand this concept very well later on we'll have a final we'll have a one final project we'll have a one final project using a application like our website application and we'll use all those things all those different different annotation maybe not all of them but relevant most use cases one you know we'll we'll, we'll have a one uh, actual project within one application then you will see that, that time the relation if i jump on there it would be too much for you at the beginning like okay uh, the the concept of all of the annotation on the top the framework concept too so that's gonna be too much i mean you know I mean usually most of the times you know in a different other institution that's what they do they jump on the right of the you know uh, the actual uh, uh, applications uh, testing use all the concept together but it's difficult for a student to understand everything together that's why I make it part by part so that you are clear very clear use cases you know uh, all those uh, steps first and after that I move on in the app real application then you will find the relationship and how it works does that make sense? Rajiv? Yeah, it does. Okay, don't worry, we'll, we'll do an application like we did before. You know, after we learned the Java, we, we, we have we have did an exercise, like a real case exercise, right? After we covered the theory. So now, if you understand this part, moving forward, you know, when we'll 
do the another uh, um, you know the exercise it's going to be easier for you to catch it and understand and especially you know uh, for everyone okay let's move on another topic from the test engine you will see the you know so we had a missing some of the part from the day four who will cover that part let's give me the node i will say where that stops in our testing g note in our notes in testing g uh, uh, we have a one topic in a page number 25 you know in a page of, it's called parameterization let's see the definition or or use case then we'll see some of the one of the example the what is parameterization it's a very uh, commonly frequently asked question in even interview and and it's a very help helpful in your to develop a dynamic framework the concept is called parameter parameterization and it's a part of test ng so it is a part of test ng so what is parameter to pass a multiple data to the application at run time we need to parameterize our test script this concept which we can achieve by parameterization is called data driven testing so first of all i think uh, rajiv have uh, some idea about the data driven testing right so data driven testing it's in a uh, simple uh, sentence you can say to read some data from external source for your test cases right that's your data driven testing so for example you have a xml excel file you know uh, a separate excel file and there is a, some data up there like related to your test cases that you are going to use for in a specific test cases so you can read data you can get those data fetch those data and apply on your test cases that's called data driven testing so in automation you can do the same thing uh, so it means external files it means x data from external files it could be an xml file it could be a notepad even right wherever it is or it could be your our xml file so some data the global data like common data you put in your xml file in your external file whatever the file like our testing xml file it could be a notepad it could be an xml whatever the or it could be any uh, excel file whatever the file you put some data some external file and get those data apply to your some of the test case wherever you need okay that's the concept of data driven testing so we can do this type of things this data driven testing using a concept is called parameterization in testing jxml so in testing jxml you know testing jxml that we have file over here this file we can put some data over here like very common it's called the global you know uh, global variable global variable it means it's cover it can apply anywhere in your test classes in your any test classes any method that you need some global data some global variable global data as i said what is the global uh, data would be for this uh, you know for a project the for common information you can say common information common information like url the application url is the common for a project right your testing application your uh, a login username password those are the very common information that's called the global variable or global information for a project so you can put those global information in your xml file and you can use those you can call you can use those uh, information those variables you know anytime anywhere any classes any methods you need during the runtime okay are you getting my point so you run your application it's uh, you know it's uh, the very beginning you know you can put your global information over here it will get the username password and then the url from there and 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 it will start from the day one from the first class you know from the first class it will get those information first and then you will uh, your it will go to that application and it will log in and after that it, it will start it from the day one class all the methods uh, you know inside the day one day two day four go on and if anywhere you need to log out and you need to log in again say over here in day three for this module you need to again log in so in this uh, module level and before you start start this module you maybe again log in the same application or log out 
or you know logout or login again so that you are in the home page again so it it will get the same global information again from this xml file so that's the you know part of the concept of data driven which is possible using the methodology is called parameterization in xml file so you can use parameterization concept so the parameterization is tied with the test ng features if you don't have the test ng plugin in your project you can't do the parameterization okay that's clear i, I believe right everyone yeah right so that's uh, so you have to be uh, yeah you need you have to be you know uh, your test ng that's why it's called parameterization is a part of your test ng now the declare all those attribute or data the global data i was talking about you can apply in two places one you can put in in your xml file over here any places in your xml file you can put in suit level so if you put any data in your suit level any global variable attribute say username password as well as uh, say url of your application that can be if you put any parameterization you know when it's a parameterization or global variable those are the part of the parameterization so you can put the parameter parameterization information in your suit level in your xml you can put the parameterization in your test level it means after the test line you can put over here if you put want to put in test level it means it will be only applicable specific that's module it will not will applicable any module any other module and the code there is a way to declare the code related with parameterization it will be right after you test uh, you know for the, uh, right after this line it will be here before classes because it will be apply you can apply then in this module whatever the classes you have anywhere in this classes any method but it will be limited to your module but if you put in a suit level that can be apply those information any module any classes any method you know no matter what module you wants to use so that's one or you know one way to declare your parameterization which is your xml level in your testing xml file there is a one more way you can declare your parameterization which is specifically any class so it could be declared in any class say day three class this you you want to put some common global variable or you know so those things you could put over here too that could be in a specific class so it will be the limitation of works would be only in this class you can't use those parameterization information you know rather than this day three class it will be very limited to the class level so bottom line you can declare your parameterization in xml level in xml you can put it in your suit level you can put it in a test level on the other hand you can put also in your specific class level which is in your class the code would be inside the class over here you can see this i use another annotation is called parameters we'll see how it works you know but you can put in your class level so it will be specifically in your this class with the test that you are working so it will be only applicable with your specific class in a specific class it is specific module okay so that's the two place you are can declare your parameterization data so how now we're going to see how we can declare okay so let's go to the your test ng practice class i mean in your xml level we'll see how you can declare your xml level so in your xml level let's go here okay first uh let's see uh we're going to we're going to uh learn say assume that we we need to declare some parameterization uh, some data in your module level say in your this module level home loan module okay over here so as i said when you can declare in suit level or you can declare over here code would be the same just place would be different so it will be limited to your home loan module and it means it will be only limited to day three specific over here okay so how we can do this let's if i want to do over here we'll start with a tag 
tag name is called you can see as soon as I put the opening bracket all the related tag name it comes like it uh, in XML file we can use classes groups methods the, the package and there is a parameter so you will type the parameter or select or type or whatever you want parameter automatically code will come you see the code automatically comes so it's parameter opening bracket and there is a parameter closing bracket so put this one in in the you know in a separate line it's up to you you can put the same line but this is the between the parameter and parameter closing so between this you will have the information so now after a parameter it automatically come with parameter name you will give it in parameter in parameter tag you will have a two information as you can say two attribute one one attribute would be name another attribute attribute would be value name and value so name it you can say two key one is key is name another one I mean uh, sorry two attribute one is name another one is value so name you will give us something name for this attribute so example I want to give a name say in between the double quotation URL this is URL this is name this is the uh, you know name of the attribute name attributes name is URL and and then value attribute you will have the value of this this name this attributes value would be actual value over here say example what would be the value I would say uh, say uh, uh, code inbox automation box code inbox AU automation lab dot com whatever your application okay say this and then you close it you close it this is your one parameter okay this is your one parameter and after that you after that oh if you put the close over here you don't need to close over here I think uh, I believe yes you don't have to close there yeah if you close so you know it's it's covered the, the 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 close parameter you can either you can leave it open then you put the another parameter uh, tag closing tag over here or you just close over here like you know we did the classes all right so classes we said uh, over here the classes we put the close so so you in you can have a one parameter you can have a one parameter you can have a multiple parameter so the important part is that every parameter line you will have it two attribute one is name another one is value and name you will give it some sort of name whatever the name you will say so I give a name is called URL and your for the value attribute what would be the value value would be the for this name attribute what's the value okay let's see the another one so you can have a multiple parameter in your you know as many as parameter uh, you know the global information in your uh, you know uh, uh, parameter declaration so you can have a multiple parameters so let's do another one that would say parameter okay let's uh, give a name probably I would say uh, say sometimes your name would be username and password so or your username so it's email and I would give a value say maybe um, info what is the value of email info at say uh, code and box codeinbox.com so this is your say your you know name it's email so usually when you log in your username is lots of times it's email and then your password is that what is the actual email right so I put the name attribute it's a uh, given it name is email and the value of this email is that this is the value right so let's close it so let's close it and then you don't need to other parameters so I put the two parameter or two global variables information in my home loan module level mo home loan test level guys are you following yeah right okay now let's if I want to use now say so what I said if you put this module level test level if this parameter value information is only belongs to you can use in this in this module so in this module what's the classes you have you know if you have a more than one class whatever the classes you have list over here it can apply any one of the class so we have only day three so we have we only can use in day three those information so if I go through day three 
how we can use this up there we have to we have to say now this is the time yeah here we have a one method test method okay we have a one test method so just forget about this part just see this is a normal test method test method this is a test annotation public void uh, this method name is web login card here you know and then forget about this part you don't assume that you don't have this part so this is your test method okay here and you have a some output information just you know printing is information as it is so assume that in this class in this method in test method you are going to use this those information those you know uh, url and email this two parameter two two attribute uh, you are going to use you know and their value is going to use up there so how we can call them so you have to now know how to call them from there to here all we are going to do you will put it at the rate at the rate parameters at the rate parameters you know keyword so here is a if you notice this if there's a difference between in your when you write your xml your parameter is lowercase and then parameter just parameter every line you opening your tag is parameter with a lowercase but when you call them in a specific a class a specific method you have to tell at the rate parameters there's a s and your p is uppercase a lot of times we do mistake that part so you have a parameters annotation in the and parameter annotation then is your opening uh, there is opening bracket between the opening bracket you will put another curly braces Clo you know this curly braces then here you will and you will put whatever the attribute you have in this xml file you have attribute two attribute right one is name and and this is value value is for this one and another one is name and value so you are going to put your two attribute exactly the same way you wrote give the name like email url email so come back here url so two attribute name two attribute name exactly the same way again it should be the same way if you if you put you can see here if you put like your url it's url same way right and then your email email is the same way if you mix up the you know uh, the word like email is over here e is smaller but you put the e uh, uppercase not it means you are calling you are calling this to attribute from here to here so you are calling by the name so whatever the name exactly the same way between this you know between the uh, uh, string so this is two double uh, quotation so if you have a more than if you have more parameter over here whatever the name you will just put a comma like this and then put the name so it will come to here clear and then your test annotation and then your test method and inside the test method here is that uh, you remember this is called parameter we remember that we told that this is called the inside you, you can have a empty parameter you can have a some parameter so if you have a parameter annotation it means some parameters uh, attribute name inside this method you have to pass some of the at exactly the same number of parameters you have you have one parameter you have two parameters right here is a one url email for each and every parameter you have to pass another variable over here with a data type so you have a two two parameter attribute one is url and email and both are string type because both are in double quotation so you have to put exactly you know different name different name different data data variable different variable with the data type data type will depend on what type of parameter you are passing over here so it's both are string so you will put give it example here you can see i give a i give a uh, you know first parameter i give a uh, the variable i give a name uh, for this url i give a name url name this is the you know uh, variable name i give and its return type is string because this url is holding a string variable data similarly comma i give it another variable name it's called email address for this one it will automatically sync it will understand that you know the first one will match with the first one and second one will goes to the second one 
and the data type again depends on your what type of data is holding for this uh, actual you know attribute it means whatever the value for url you are calling url and email so it will come here in your xml and it will say okay it will find this two parameter two uh, attribute by url and email so it means every you know attribute name you have a uh, some value so this urls means it ha it is holding the value this you know code inbox automation lab.com so this url means it has the value this and this email means it has a value this info code inbox that so this so whatever the value it's holding according each and every parameter uh, uh, attribute you know when you declare any variable this variable will get the same value so this url this url means it's it's the substitute of this this url this url name this variable is it's the substitute of this so in this url this url have the value of this so ultimately your this variable have the value of this and this email address will have the value of this are you following guys so now now what i did inside to understand that is that really this variable it's holding this value value and this this one is holding this value to understand that you know you know you in a real case you know you, you are going to use this url and a e e email address to logging somewhere you will say inside this method probably you'll say driver dot find element you know go to uh you know you will put over here driver dot get get then you you pass that this variable to go for the this uh, url but in our case you know i'm just making it easy i will you know i print i will i said i i did a print statement i in print statement i print you know i said okay whatever the value of this this variable so this variable is supposed to have the now value of this one and this variable email supposed to have the value of uh, this email address so i pass those email address in printing statement so in our printing statement it's supposed to print this this uh, you know uh, website address as well as it's supposed to print this email address if it's print this it means it's working it means so why are those information coming from this variable how they get the information information is coming from here and where those variables coming getting the information it's coming from the parameter when you say a parameter annotation it automatically find that another pairs of parameters in your xml file for this same over here in the same module and it will find you know those exactly the same variable and each variable have the value so it means it, it will automatically replace the value and it will it will get the knowledge of those values guys is that a make sense everyone yeah right so yeah. let's see now let's see the if you so update it so let's i'm going to give you this code did you update your xml file i would say let's update your xml file yes update your xml file update your xml file as it is as i as i wrote add this two parameter in the home loan module put this attribute url and the value of the url and the another one email and the email and make sure you close it each and every one so there is no limitation how many parameter or uh, uh, you know value you can declare namely you can declare as many as you need okay so if you're done then i will give you this code this method code okay so then you will see how this is, is working for the day three just put this method at the very beginning let me know when you're done so if you run so run run it 
uh, your testing JSON file and if you run it and you will see the output in your output you will see you know one is goes to the the output related to the home loan module which is the day three in your day three you will see uh, you'll see uh, uh, you know your the both two information the the value of the URL value of the URL which is holding URL this variable which is the you know and I print this one inside over here I said you know I put it in a, a print statement I call I use the I call the same variables it's same variable it means it's supposed to have the value of you know code inbox automation lab this URL yeah, so it means it's supposed to print this this value so here is a printing this value and similarly I print the you know uh, this one email address in the email address variables so which is the value of this email email value, uh, you know attributes of values which is the info at coding box so it's supposed to print over here also info at coding box and after that the methods it's a printing method for the uh, after suit it comes from the after suits um, the last one right you see this how you can declare your your uh, global variable in any module level and you can call you know uh, respectively any method from the same class for that belongs to this module and it will come over here and that's called parameterization that's called on the other hand you can say data driven because you are getting information reading data fetching data from separate file not from the your XML uh, not from their class level so this is one way you can declare the same thing you can do same thing you can do same thing you can do in your suit level so right after suit you can put over here and then you can use anywhere then you will not limit it only to use in this home module you can use any method even in person another module any classes and you can you know you can call those call those variable call this this two two variable right you uh, you can call similar way with any method you have in this in any classes any uh, 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 in a method so that's the use case or declaration of the parameter from the XML file is that clear make sense yes right so if you go to our node you will now you will find the similarities what I mean so I said over here with the help of parameter tag in testing the XML file or parameter annotations, parameters annotation in, in in test class. So this is the first way to declare. Example to add parameter in module or test level. So in a test level, say this is your test module called name is car loan, and here you are declaring two parameter, right? Name is URL, the value, and then name is this and the value. Okay, and then you can call uh, you know you go to the exactly the same same places whatever the method you have over here how to use the parameter variables in test method this is the way you can call so whatever your uh, uh, you know the test uh, method specifically for that module you know you call the exactly use the parameter annotation uh, use the exactly the same attribute name both of them and then you declare in your uh, with your method you declare two variable which is the parameter to separate variable and and with the data type so what will be the data type data type depends on what type of value you are passing over here okay and then you pass and then whatever you need to use usually you know what is the use case of url url for this like this is the your application url like you know google.com whatever usually remember that at the beginning when we declare the code how you declare the url we said driver.get then we pass the directly url so instead of a url now you if you pass this variable this variable since holding this url it will automatically indirectly you are passing this url over here it'll so if you run this it will run this application this url first see this from where we learn from the raw how to do it now it's the same thing we're going to use uh, uh, but it's a different more error test engine help the test engine parameterization same way use a name you know after you get into the url and then you, you'll put probably the code over here uh, 
in the field code for the username and password you know and then you enter the you instead of username you know instead of you putting the username or password actual username and actual password you just pass the variable so because this variable is holding the actual username and password that's going to be the real case you know real life use case so that's the way if you know how to use it or how to declare it you know whatever you need you can use it but when you are going to use it totally depends on you because this is the mechanism that you are developing because you are a developer so you you have to know that you know when you need to use this concept okay so this is one way to declare your parameterization or data driven you know uh, testing there's a, another way you can declare specifically you can declare in a class level it will be only limited to class level in the same class day three i also declare another it's a small code in the class level i declare some parameter which is called uh, uh, parameterization using the data provider annotation using a data provider annotation that you can do your parameterization you can establish your parameterization that will be you know uh, uh, that will be applied to a specific method only this class there's no other place you can use so how you can do this we'll learn it tomorrow next class okay because this is a little bit complicated a little bit complicated than the other one okay but it's not necessary that you have to have to use this it's all different different concept and and then you have to use it very wisely you know very wisely you have to use in your framework some people they use some people they don't even use it it's not necessary it's all depends on you just you know it and then when you develop your framework it's up to you you are either you use this way or either you declare an xml file you declare in class level or in our uh, we will learn when we will do the actual another real life uh, application you know build the framework you can declare all those things separate uh, you know a notepad that's the more common you know in a real life you, you know most of the people they you know add another uh, ex, uh, 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 what's called the text note notepad and then they put all the like username password url all the common variable and they call those data from there okay so pretty much you know that's all for today i would say uh, please you know spend a little bit time today so that tomorrow when we are going to explain the data driven you know you have i mean the similar type of concept but it's declare declaration it's a different way data provider you know a lot of time they ask during the interview but again this is all depends on you or your company you know where they wants to use but you have to know it you know it's good to know it you know, so we'll we'll see that you know we're going to use over here a uh, two-dimensional array i hope that you remember the two-dimensional array how to declare this if you forget it please brush up that two-dimensional array declaration remember the row and column and then you started with the zeroth row then row one then row uh, two Similarly, your column is started with the zeroth column and then one column, two column, and zeroth row, zeroth column will have the first value. So, if you understand, remember that part, the two dimensional array, it's going to be easy to understand. Okay, so that's the data provider using the data provider annotation, the second parameterization, uh, you know, declare in specific class level. We'll see next class. Okay, is that a good for now? You see, this is like we're going to depth and depth and depth, right? so you know it's time there's no way we can you know waste our time that we have to put some more time a little bit more time so that we're all with the flow we can go with that flow is there any question before we close our class today thank you so much thank you. okay so we'll see you on the next class tomorrow okay thank you